Hello and welcome to the IHS Harmony Enterprise Database Import Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will review how to import data to a Harmony Enterprise project from a database by establishing a connection between Harmony Enterprise and that particular database. This session will go over connecting to database, mapping tables and fields of that database to the corresponding tables and fields of Harmony Enterprise, use of filters during import process, and last we will review how to schedule automatic imports. The session will not cover how to create a database, so we assume a readily available database for this tutorial. Now let's switch over to Harmony Enterprise application. Currently you can see we have a blank project. There are no wells in this particular project and the objective is to add some wells of interest from our database. To achieve this you can go to file import and then select the option from database or alternatively you could go to the toolbar and click on the icon import from database. The import wizard window should appear and here we are able to create a new connection or import from an existing connection that we have previously done. Any previous connections should be listed here and any scheduled automatic imports that we have set up for a specific connection should also be listed here. In our example, we don't have a previous connection, so we will just go ahead and create a new connection. In this window, we can give our connection a name. We can also select the form of connection or the database format to connect to. We have a number of options here. We can connect to an access file database. An example of this would be an Aries database. We can also select to connect to data sources, for example, Oracle or SQL databases. And if those databases are username and password protected, we can also set those settings here. Additionally, if this database comes with schema setup, we can also set it up here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add SQL database into the import wizard such that we are able to connect to it. The purpose of this is just to showcase the process of adding a new data source into the import wizard. However, we will use an Aries database in the form of access file for the purpose of importing new wells production data into our project. If you have connected to a specific data source before, this data source should be available in the drop down list here. If we don't see that specific data source listed here, that means it has not been added before, and hence we need to add it by clicking the Add New button here. There are two things that we need to know before adding a new database. We need to know the server address. We also need to know the database name. I'm going to go ahead and click Add New. The ODBC data source administrator wizard should pop up. In this wizard, we can add, remove, or configure a database. In my case, I want to add a new database, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Add. In this step here, we need to select the driver for the database or data source setup. In my case, it is a SQL data source, so I'm just going to go ahead and find the relevant selection. SQL Server Native Client 11.0. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. Here we need to give our database connection a name. It's a name that we will use to refer to the database in that specific server. I'm going to go ahead and call it Test Data Source. As I mentioned before, in order to connect to a data source, we need to know the server name. And in this case, I do have my server name copied, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste it. And then I will go ahead and hit Next. In this step, we don't have to touch anything. We will leave everything as default. In this step, we need to change the default database to the database that we are trying to connect to. I'm going to go ahead and click Change Default and try to find the database of interest. In my case, the database name is called Performance Source. 
I will just make sure that it's clicked and go ahead and hit next and the final step here we don't have to do anything we will leave everything as default I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish here we do have a summary of the ODBC connection that we have just established and to do a quick test I'm just gonna go ahead and click test data source button you can see that test completed successfully if we see another message for example test failed that means we have done at least one of the steps incorrectly and we need to go revisit that I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK and hit OK here and then you can see my data source is added here using the name that I just I just gave it I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK if you go back to the drop-down list here I should be able to see my data source that I just added and now I'm able to connect to that data source it is worth noting that once we add a database into the import wizard the process of importing wells or data into a Harmony Enterprise project for both options access file or data sources becomes similar for this tutorial we're going to use an Aries database in the form of access file however the steps that we are going to follow should apply to both options the only difference is that selecting a file or selecting a data source from the drop-down list so the first step is to give our connection a name I'm going to call it test database import and then select the appropriate option in my case is an Aries database in the form of access file I'm going to click access file and then click the browse button to navigate to the file of interest for this tutorial I'm actually using an Aries test database that is also available for the user it becomes available as part of the installation package if you want you can actually find it in the C drive program files IHS market IHS Harmony Enterprise and you can select the version uh, appropriate or the version that you are running and then a folder named FDBC support files and then Aries you should be able to see the same test database I'm going to go ahead and select this database and click open and now I can click next After we have set up the connection, we can specify mapping configuration in this step. There are a number of options here. The first option is Aries. This mapping is pre-configured based on the standard tables and columns available in Aries database. So if you are working with an Aries database, as it is the case in this example, you will select this option. IHS market views. You will select this option if your database has been pre-configured to map its content to Harmony Enterprise by your database team. Said in other words, mapping comes from the views or queries built within the database or the data source. Custom mapping for this option, you can manually map the tables and columns in your database to Harmony, tables and views in the next step of the wizard. The last option is legacy schema mapping. So this option will be appropriate if you have a schema CSV file for the database mapping for the purpose of this tutorial we are going to start with custom mapping I'm going to go ahead and select custom mapping and then click next in this step here we are able to map our tables and columns you could see here there are some tables and columns that must be mapped before we proceed those are indicated with an X mark in the dialog to the left we can map tables and views and in the dialog to the right we can map fields within those tables and views here we have a list of IHS market views or tables and we can map those to the source database tables and views for example production history table correspond to a table named AC daily in the source database and by selecting that table and highlighting this row we are able to view the fields within those two tables this column here shows a list of IHS market fields and we can map those to the corresponding fields of the source 
database under AC daily table. For example, well key field correspond to a field named problem under the table AC daily in the source database. Similarly, date time field correspond to a field named date under AC daily table in the source database. And by mapping those two fields, you can see the X marks has disappeared, which means that the minimum number of fields for production history table have been mapped. Now we can go on to map well information table and any other tables of interest. However, since we're dealing with an ARIES database with standard mapping configuration, we can go back and select ARIES as the option. Alternatively, if we have a legacy schema mapping or file that contains the mapping information, we can also choose that. I'm going to show a quick example for this option. Let's go ahead and click legacy schema mapping. I do have an example file with mapping configuration pre-configured. I'm going to select my file. So here we are prompt to select the file of interest. I'm going to click open. You can see here there are three tables that have been mapped and there are a number of fields within those tables that have been mapped. This is something that has been brought up from the CSV file that I just, I just selected. We can also go back and select ARIES as mapping option and this should give me a similar results. Now that we have completed our mapping setup, we can go ahead and click next. In this window, we are able to set up filters. This is a useful and handy tool, especially when dealing with a large database that has a large number of wells. We can set up filters such that we are able to pull wells that are only of interest to us. If we want to add a filter, we simply click the button add at the top left corner. And from the drop down list, we can select from a number of fields that we can filter based on. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show how to set up a filter based on primary fluid. I'm going to choose to only import wells that are labeled as gas wells. I'll check gas here and then click OK. The filter is added and now I can go ahead and click Next. In this step we can select wells to be imported into the project. By default there are no wells shown until we configure a well hierarchy. We can do this by clicking the gear icon at the top left corner and select the appropriate option. There are a number of options to select from and we can select as many fields as we want. For this tutorial, I'm going to select reservoir name as my hierarchy structure and click add. And now I'm able to click OK. You can see that my wells are grouped based on the reservoir name. And by the way, we are only able to see gas wells because we have set up a filter in the previous step. This filter is only showing me gas wells. Here we can also view wells data in a plot format and we can jump between wells to view their data. We can also select all wells to be imported by having a check mark in front of all wells. Or we can also select only few wells to be imported. For this example, we're going to bring in everything. So I'm going to select all wells. And now we can click Next. This is the last step of the import wizard. Here we can tell Harmony what to do for updating data of existing well. We can also decide to recalculate sand phase pressure and create automatic scheduled well updates. There is a number of options to select from. For production data, for example, we can append from last production date, we can add only new data to the well or overwrite existing data in the well. Likewise, we can select from few options for attributes and properties, we can discard any incoming data, add only new attributes and properties, or overwrite existing properties and attributes. In terms of analysis, we can discard any analyses in the database. We can add those analyses as new into the well or overwrite any analyses that have matching name in the existing well. Similarly, well bore.
we can append wallboard data, we can discard wallboard data, or overwrite wallboard data. Those options that we select here will override any global settings that we have in the project. We can apply those options for the past 90 days or the entire history. By default, the entire history option is selected, but you could choose otherwise. For sun phase pressure recalculations, we simply elect to auto calculate sun phase pressure after the import by checking this box or choose not to recalculate sun phase pressure after the import by leaving this unchecked. The last feature we will discuss in this tutorial is the automatic import feature. This is a handy and useful tool, especially when dealing with large projects that we frequently update and it takes time to update them. So we can use this tool to set up automatic import that could happen outside of work hours. There are two ways to set up automatic imports, either using Windows Task Scheduler or Command Line. In this tutorial, we will focus on Windows Task Scheduler and touch briefly around Command Line. In order to set up automatic import using Windows Task Scheduler, we simply need to specify start date, which we can select from a calendar view. I'm going to leave it as is for now. We can also specify the time at which the automatic import will happen. I will set it up to be at 6 o'clock in the evening. We also need to specify the frequency of the update. We can choose daily, weekly, or monthly. If we choose weekly, we will need to specify the day on which the automatic import will happen. Similarly, if we choose monthly, we will need to specify the day from a list of options. Once we are happy with the setup, we can simply save this task. Now our task has been successfully saved. The second way of setting up automatic import is using command line. Here the import wizard generates program and arguments such that we can use to run from a command line or an equivalent application. We can simply copy the information and use them in the command line or the equivalent application. I prefer to use the Windows Task Scheduler, so I'm going to stick to that. Once the automatic import setup is complete, there are two ways to proceed. If we want to only set up automatic import that happen at a certain frequency, we can simply hit finish. However, if we want to proceed with importing wells and data immediately and also set up the automatic import, we can leave the automatic import task safe and simply uncheck auto import. You can see that the finish button has changed into import. This means that the selected wells will be imported. For this tutorial, we want to import wells first and also save the automatic import. So I'm going to proceed and click import. successfully imported seven wells and zero failed imports. So this is a good sign. We can simply hit finish and now we are able to work on our project. You can see that to the left in the entity viewer hierarchy, we can see a number of wells has been added. We can view wells as we want. If we want to go and update our database import setup, we can simply go back and click on the import from database icon and we should be able to see our connection name and if we have any scheduled automatic imports. I don't need to do any editing for the purpose of this tutorial, so I'm simply going to close this wizard by clicking the cancel button. With this, we conclude our database import tutorial. Thank you for watching.